Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to learn to use the rational zero test to determine the number of possible rational zeros in a polynomial. We will also use Descartes' rule of signs to help determine the number of possible zeros, and we'll look at upper and lower bound rules to help us determine zeros. First is the rational zero test. Here's a snippet from the books showing what the rational zero test is. But in short, it's really the factors of the constant term over the factors of the leading coefficient give you the list of possible zeros. So what we mean by that, looking at our sample problem here, is given this sample one, if we want to take the factors of the constant divided by the factors of the leading coefficient, so the factors of 3 divided by the factors of 2. We have plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3 in the numerator and plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2 in the denominator. So this one's pretty straightforward with primes. Uh, there are too, too many factors. So the possible uh, factors here in this polynomial or the possible zeros are plus or minus one half, plus or minus one, plus or minus three halves, and plus or minus three. So now that we know our possible zeros, we can check using synthetic division. So let's try one and see what happens. So we input one as our divisor, bring down our coefficients of two, three, negative eight, and three. Leave our product row blank. And in our sum row, we prime the pump. Bring down our two, one times two is two. Three plus two is five. One times five is five. Negative eight plus five is negative three. And one times negative three is negative three and we get a remainder of zero, so that's awesome. That means one is a factor, lucky us. So we've got our coefficients here. So now we know where our factors are x minus one times two x squared plus five x minus three. This is factorable to two x minus one times x plus three. So our factors, our zeros are x equals one, x equals one half and x equals negative three. Couple hints for using the rational zero test. Our sample was fairly easy because we had primes, uh, but when that leading coefficient is not one, that really expands the number of possible rational zeros. Um, and so one of the things you can do is use a graphing calculator to speed up the calculations. Now that graphing calculator can give you a sense of where the zeros are. You can also use the intermediate value theorem to give you a sense of where the zeros will fall between particular va values. And the factor theorem and synthetic division can be used to test the possible rational zeros. And we did that in that last sample problem. Objective two is Descartes' rule of signs. And in Descartes' rule of signs, this works really with the changes in signs of the coefficients, okay, or variations in signs. The cursor down here a little bit. If we look at this particular problem, x cubed minus 3x plus 2 has two variations in signs. We go from positive to negative back to positive. So each change We've got a variation in sign there. Okay, So Descartes' rule of signs tells us that the number of positive real zeros is equal to the number of variations in signs or less than that number by an even integer. So this one, we would have, we have two variations in signs, so we would have either two or zero positive, positive real zeros. 
the number of negative real zeros is equal to the number of variations in signs of f of negative x. So then you'd have to put negative x into your function and see what happens to the signs. And again, it's equal to the number of variations in signs less than the num or less than that by an even integer. So when we say by an even integer, you know, we we say you can have two or zero, or if we have three or then it could be one, that kind of thing. So there's a difference of two there. So let's take a look at how Descartes' rule of signs works. Okay, determine the, the possible numbers of positive and negative real zeros in this function. And we have three variations in signs for f of x, which means we would have three or one positive real zeros. When we put negative x in, every single one of our signs is negative. So we have zero changes in sign. And I'll use the delta there, changes in sign. So that means we have no negative real zeros. Well, how is that helpful? That helps a lot. That means when we're graphing our polynomial, we have, we have no x-intercepts here because we don't have any that are negative. So all our x-intercepts are going to be over in the somewhere on the positive x's. That's helpful. Uh, if you think back on the, the previous lesson where we had all the positive and possible positive and negatives, we could eliminate all the negative possibilities. In objective three, we have our upper and lower bound rules. And these work with synthetic division. So we'll let our function be a polynomial with real coefficients and a leading coefficient is divided by x minus c. So if c, so c here is our divisor. So if our divisor is positive, so like we're dividing by something like two. And each number in the last row is either, either positive or zero. So in our sum row, we have all positives or zero. Then we know that our divisor is the upper bound, meaning we don't have any zeros or x-intercepts that are beyond that in our graph. Okay, so in this case, no more zeros past two. Again, that's helpful. And then if our divisor is negative and the numbers in the last row are alternately positive or negative, then C is a lower bound. So let's say we had negative two and our, as our divisor, and then our, we have alternately positive and negative answers here, well then this would be a lower bound. So super specific, pretty detailed, uh, but they can be helpful. So let's take a look at sample three here. We wanna find all the real zeros of six x cubed minus four x squared plus three x minus two. We apply the rational zero test, so we're gonna have lots of zeros here. Negative two divided by six, so we have lots of possible zeros. I apply Descartes' rule of signs, and we have three sign changes, okay? So that means we're gonna have uh, three positive or one positive real zero from A, and no negative real zeros from B. Well that, again, that is helpful. That means that all our x-intercepts are gonna be over here and we're only gonna have three or one. So one of our options was positive one for x equals one. Um, So let's try that using synthetic division to see if that's a factor. So 
We'll bring our coefficients down. I don't really need the plus three there, but. So we prime our pump with the six. One times six is six. Add down, we get two. One times two is two. Add down, we get five. One times five is five, and we get three. So we get our remainder of three, which means one is not an x-intercept, okay? So all our results from synthetic division here are positive, though. So since all the coefficients are positive, one is an upper bound, okay? We know that there are no x-intercepts beyond one, and we also know we have no negative ones, so that means all our x-intercepts are somewhere between 0 and 1. Well, that's helpful. We can eliminate some of our possibilities. By trial and error or going to your graphing utility, you can see that 2 thirds is a 0. Now, I'm not going to do that here. You're going to have to trust me on that. But if you graph that function, you would see that right around 2 thirds we'd have a 0. Since Descartes told us that we would have 3 or 1 positive re real zeros, we've narrowed it to the only possibility of two-thirds. So by doing long division, and I'm not going to do the long division for you, but we could do long division here, and we would get a quotient of 6x squared plus 3, which is not factorable, and that confirms that x equals two-thirds is our only zero. So our factored function is x minus 2 thirds times 6x squared plus 3. And our only 0 occurs at x equals 2 thirds or the ordered pair 2 thirds 0. These are imaginary. And we'll work on those another time. So there are some tests for helping find the zeros of a function. And we'll work on that more when I see you in class.